Warning, this is a review of the original Crayon for Anime Month. No audio video clips from the anime in question are being used in the making of this review. And this is clearly for entertainment use. As such, all properties belong to Funimation Entertainment and also Media Factory. Told you I'd eventually get to it. If you missed the Agree on Evolve review for fun after watching this review, you want to go directly to that. There'll be an annotation in the in the video so you can access it. Thank you. Welcome back to Anime Month with the second half of our Crayon 2 for the original Crayon that I was supposed to do all supposed to do all the way back on Tuesday, but I didn't completed the series until last night. So, what is a Crayon, you might ask? Well, it's me a fact factories Factory's Project Aquarion. And if you and if you like mech anime, mostly the Voltron Power Rangers set, this falls under that. Aquarion and by the way, this is your spoiler warning. Takes place in the takes place in a futuristic world where human beings are at war against an evil force known as the Shadow Angels, led, led by the mysterious yet enigmatic Toma. Shadow Angels wish to harvest human lives, or rather human energy known as Prana, to to reawaken and refuel their tree of life. But human beings ain't gonna go out like that. So a super secret task force known as the Eva is formed to battle against the Shadow Angels with what? The mythical Aquarion. A mech of, mech of tremendous incredible strength. The pilot Aquarion, though, takes a special kind of pilot in the form form of form of specially trained human beings, more like mutants, known as elements. Each element, given its given his or her own unique special skills, but of course they're still in training, so led under led under the teachings teachings of their headmaster master fudo the elements have been putting up a good fight but with no advantage over the shadow angels that is until until the aquarium team stumble stumble upon a mis mysterious Mysterious man known as Apollo, who has super, super smell powers like a dog, and who's been, been living, living out in the homeless wilderness, hunting for food for years. This character almost appears savage in nature at first. Fudo and the rest rest of the Dieva higher ups believe Apollo to be the reincarnation nation of a being known as Solar Wing, who was the create creator and an almighty super pilot of Aquarion twelve thousand years prior, according to an ancient legend. See Seeing that Sylvia, 
the other main lead is the reincarnation nation of Sor Sorling's romantic interest, Cillion, from 12,000 years ago. This is all brought in, brought in the tragic focus when the Shadow Shadow Angels attack, abducting Apollo's friends, and Apollo find, finds himself accidentally at first behind the controls of one of the mythical vectors, the flying machines that form Aquarion. But when Solar Aquarion is formed, when it's never been formed before, Apollo is essentially drafted, drafted into the element school. On the way, he he meets other elements, such as the bad bad luck and seemingly seemingly depressive. Impressive character Rena, the the bubbly yet hyper hyper emotional emotional Sugumi Gumi Sylvia's brother Sirius, who has a major major plot point later later in the show, the charming soccer playing ladies man. Pierre, who has been a veteran pilot, pilot, and the oversmart tech nerd of the group, Group June, among other pilots. Each pilot brings their own particular elemental skill as well as their own personality to the table, and each of these personalities are given their own unique story and character arcs. And ultimately, by the end of Aquarion, all of these plot lines are flushed out, including the main one. Aquarion, Aquarion boasts, boasts great CGI visuals, visuals in the battle just composed by traditional anime. But the anime itself can be sketchy at sketchy at times with unfortunately their eye expressions being sometimes sometimes blank in nature. And in fact, there's a later episode sewed in sewed in the second half of the series that takes a completely different animation approach. Episode eighteen if you're wondering. This change, this change in approach, this far in the series, can almost be jarring at times. But thankfully, this is the only episode in which the style is used. Other than that, it stays rather traditional. Additional and and the battle and the battles may not hold as much emotional weight as Attack on Titan, but character dev Development abounds, bounds in Aquarion, and and is one of the strongest points of the series. However, this is where all the negativity comes in. The vectors are controlled, controlled and powered by emotions, and if all three pilots are not in the proper merge state. In other words, this series tried to go scientific with how a giant robot can be formed. The merge can't happen. But that's not to say emotions like anger can't fuel Aquarion's own power. It's just that all three three elements must agree almost in partial unison to the merge. And speaking of merging, Aquarion on the internet has been noted for its particular choice of 
dialogue when it comes to the act of merging. See, merging is what happens when a Quarion is formed together into its giant mech form when all the emotions of the three pilots seemingly combine. But, as you could have guessed, after all, this is Japan, it's treated almost as a sexual act with or orgasmic moaning and di dialogue, dialogue that makes open-ended references to sex. Even when the characters talk about merging, even in the casual sense, since it's almost like it's almost almost like a bunch of men and women sharing their sexual experiences. Hell, hell, there's even an entire episode about Sugumi actually going through her first merge, and when it's when it's referenced throughout the episode, it's almost treated as though she is losing her sexual virginity. That there, there's little to no subtlety here with Aquarion. Sure, there's plenty of, there's plenty of comedy sprinkled, sprinkled among the episodes, especially early. But this is one of the drawbacks of Aquarion. It doesn't really start to get serious with its plot until a. To around episode 16. That's right, a good half of the series goes by before the seriousness of the main plot kicks in. Before then, it's seemingly a Shadow Angel of the Week series with a new Shadow Angel popping up just appropriately to meet Aquarion's problems. Problems within the elements. The headmaster Fudo gives some kind of Nirvana sparkle, haha, <laughs> like philosophy lesson, and the elm elements manage the band together, together long enough to form a brand new combination and a brand new Deus Ex Machina ultimate attack. And trust me, it's seemingly every episode that this happens. Even even up to the last episode where the ultimate save the world attack attack is used to f used to well you know and but I won't spoil anything there the music though is one of my points great angelic courses courses inner energetic action music and Two very good opening themes, most noted the second, known as Go Tight, are standouts. The ending theme, however, not so good. The English, the English dub is passable and, and, and works well, but of course, the Japanese dub could have even more sexual innuendo planted. Planted. Aquarion's a good, good series that's a quick watch with only 26 episodes. So, it's, and it's passable enough and the characters are engaging enough to keep you in the whole way. But it's failure to get to the point until way late and it's overuse of theming can, can be an over turn off. Plus, there's too much science jargon in Aquarion in terms of how the vectors work. And pretty much, the science pretty much comes down to pointlessness. You'll, you'll otherwise ignore the whole thing. That's why I give Aquarion Unfortunately, only a 6 out of a possible 10. With its light plot, plot building, 
sexual innuendos and way too much science for for a mech show that makes absolutely no sense in the greater scheme of things, this love story may be something good for the obscure, but ultimately, it falls short. Unlike its follow-up, however, the follow-up, Evil, is much better, better than the original, and... Seeing that you watched this review, if you want my thoughts on Aquarion Evil, the series follow-up, once again, follow, follow the annotations that I will leave at the beginning and right here in this video, or go to the Code Equestria Anime Month playlist and check it out. So, so with that said... Is sex needed in action anime? Answer the question down in the comment section below. And un until Saturday when I finally give my reviews, uh, review of Sword Art Online as well as my first impressions of Sword Art Online 2, this is Nirvana Sparkle. Find peace in your own Nirvana. Thanks for watching.